Previously on VidMotion Review. Hello, Jake. Thanks for having me on VidMotion Review. It's round time. Oh, I actually have more to say about Ragdog 2. So, first things first. First of all, I made a mistake. I had forgotten some of Pond's lines in the Rock Dog 2 review, so I'm going to include them at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Some of it is extended too, so uh, just FYI. Anyways, let's get to this book. So on this channel, I reviewed Rock Dog 1 and Rock Dog 2. So Rock Dog is based off a graphic novel made by the- Sorry if I mispronounced this, uh, Zhang Jun. But anyways, I'm going to give the spotlight to Pong Kong Kukuyoyo for a bit. He'll tell you his opinion about the book. Hope you enjoy. Yo, Jake. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this, uh, you know, uh, Tibetan Rock Dog comic review. Well, I think it's the time to say my opinion about this incredible comic. First of all, it is one of the most unexpected comics that I, that I ever read. And what I mean by this? Simple. It's a comic that is not focused on a children audience like the Rock Dog movies being a comic focused on an adult audience because it has some gore essence and believe me this can be compared to the Mortal Kombat fatalities and the two will tie for how graphic they are apart from that the comic is great the development of metal since he is adopted arrives in the city of dogs meets his future girlfriend becomes a famous rocker with his band and literally fights to death with uh, some wild super saiyan powers to have to save his girlfriend from being killed this literally is really brutal it really it really impressed me how a character that is uh, that at the beginning was equivalent to a shy kid evolves in a brutal way becoming a rocker and a wild warrior in short i can say that this comic is one of the best comics i i've currently read i will give the comic a 8.9 of 10 since it's a very good comic. Thank you very much for inviting me, Jake, and uh, see ya! So yeah, the book is definitely a different tone compared to the movie. I think everything he said pretty much sums the book up. There's nothing more I can add. But with all that out of the way, let's get on to Pond's other section. Disclaimer, some of these aren't my opinions, but hey, we can all have our opinions, right? So, uh, enjoy! Hi Jake, thanks again for having me. As this is a review of Rock Dog 2, I'm here to express my honest opinions on this movie. First of all, the movie is a sequel to Rock Dog from 2017. Here are my first impressions of this movie. The movie gets pretty cliche in terms of the story just like its predecessor, but in an exaggerated and way and very predictable, in addition to a weaker animation than the original. Let's go by parts, okay? The movie takes place a year after the event of the original Rock Dog, where Body formed a band with his friends Dharma and Germer called True Blue. That's when Body and his friends, friends meet a music manager named Lang, and he gives them the opportunity to do a world tour with a famous pop singer called Lil Foxy. Then Body has a bursting behavior with Lil Foxy, even though she seems to have mixed feelings with Body. Then tells him uh, that uh, being famous is about being consistent and playing the game, which it only matters the popularity numbers, like f***ing influencers. This makes Body becomes a bully Maguire with an Elvis Presley costly. <laughs> Pissing off Dharma and Germer for Body's selfish way. Causing them to break up from one moment to another, and the body relates his mistake since Lang turned out to be Lennox, yes, the villain from the previous movie, and now he wants uh, to use body to his advantage by stealing all his powers to conquer the music world and boycott a benefit concert in favor to, of body. I forgot to say, at the beginning of the movie, the rock and roll park was going to be demolished, until the musicians made the protest, um, the musicians made a protest. In addition to the benefit concert and the demolition, were organized by Lang as a strategy to attract musicians, and thus, in the end, control them and be a kind of god of music. As I was, as I was saying, Buddy lose his powers, generating an avalanche in Snow Mountain. I thought everyone comes out alive except Kampa. F in the chat for this. Body goes back to Snow Mountain, watching the whole f***ing mess, and we find out that Kampa survived the avalanche. 
giving him the typical I believe in you, don't give up speech and the most children and cliche shit you can't imagine. But he recovers his powers and arrives in time to stop Linux and in an epic Dragon Ball C style battle. Body wins, apologizes to his friends, and they, they sing the typical final song, and in the movie. Okay, I think it's the time to say what I hate about this horrible sequel. First of all, what they did with Kampa. They completely broke the charisma and seriousness of the character. Going from and being a noble guardian, and now they turn him into a 50 years old man who used TikTok to dance cringe Fortnite dances. They broke camp so much that he becomes an immature and ridiculous character. Well, this is the second one, and sorry, Jake, and the whole community from what I'm going to say, but it's the truth. Wei and Shumai. What are you doing there in the first place? Okay, granted they are a nice reference to Wayne and Guard from Wayne's World movie, but why are they there? Who did you meet True Blue? Are they brothers or what? And why the hell are they bad comic relief characters? Holy sh! Why they did put them in the first place? Oh god, I'm so f pissed off right now with this movie. So. Let's continue, okay? And the third one, and here I'm going to bend. Why the f did lions get mother eliminated Angus Scarigot? He was the best character in the first movie, and then Lionsgate removed him from the sequel just because he's on holiday with his mother. Nah, I gotta hell. And you wanna know what is the worst? He was replaced by Lil Foxy, and this is. Obvious, because in the scene when Lil Foxy and Body are, pl are, are playing, this is my song, it's a clear reference when Body and Angus compose Glorious in the first part, but this time in a poorly executed way and without the charisma and emotion of the original Body and Angus scene. Despite all the bad things, the music of this film is quite good and it could be said that it's the best thing of the entire film. In addition to filling some plot voice and giving Dharma and Gerber more prominence in the sequel, the movie is not bad at all. It's enjoyable. Obviously it had its mistakes, but the movie itself has quite a few good things like some reference to its predecessor and is quite faithful in the continuity of its story. Although it does not surpass the original Rock the movie, even so, it fulfills its objective of entertainment thanks to the, its music and some funny moments. So. Without anything else to say, thank you very much for inviting me, Jake. Anytime. Although there is something more that I want to announce. Me and Jake are preparing the reveal of Rock Dog the video game. A video game based on this movie saga. Get ready because something big is coming. Stay tuned for more information. And see ya, Jake! Unedited and amazing. Well done, Pawn. Anyways, yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and don't forget, stay ultimate, stay comedians. No, Dad, it's so embarrassing. I agree with Bodhi. That's why I don't use TikTok. <laughs> guys, <laughs> to the world. Look at the face! <laughs> it, it, it looks like the Japanese moving bed for a woman. <laughs> no, seriously. The animation is bullshit.